Uh, welcome to today's webinar, Your Library and the Eclipse, presented by Melanie Miller. Melanie has been the director of the Alfred Box of Books Library for eight years. She's been interested in space science since third grade when she completed a project about Krista McCullough and then took a field trip to the Challenger Learning Center. Upon becoming library director, Melanie was passionate about including STEM learning in library programs. Since then, she has completed trainings with the Lunar and Planetary Institute, NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, Astronomical Society of the Pacific, and American Astronomical Society related to space science and informal learning. So Melanie will lead us in today's presentation, uh, and we're going to prepare because we just looked at the countdown clock and there's only 73 days until the eclipse. So we're gonna get ready. So uh, I'll turn it over to you, Melanie. Thank you. Um, so as Katora said, if you don't know me, I'm Melanie Miller, the director of the Alfred Box of Books Library. And I love all things space. And this job lets me incorporate space into library programming. And so when Katura asked me to do um, to host another program about the eclipse, um, we did one in spring. That was in June, right, Katura? The uh, spring CE. I thought that we would um, frame this one as the frequently asked questions that you, as library staff, can be prepared to answer, and that you might have yourself going into the eclipse. Um, so the first question you might be have, having is how can you prepare for the eclipse? And that's being prepared to answer lots of questions and a lot of questions. And so we're gonna go over some of those questions that you'll receive, uh, likely receive, and uh, how you can answer those. And that's probably the best way that you can be prepared for the eclipse um, in 2024. Um, as libraries, we're sort of the hubs of information in our communities. And so being able to answer those questions, especially if you have Eclipse classes on hand and they're coming to you for Eclipse classes, you can answer questions as well. Um, and that's the best way you can serve your community. You can also offer programming to help engage other learners in learning about the Eclipse, what's happening. Um, and again, being able to answer lots of questions. So we're gonna dive into some of those questions that you'll receive. <laughs> Um, so in case you don't know or have forgotten, um, April 20, April 8th, 2024, there will be a total solar eclipse. Um, it will go, I believe it starts down like in Mexico, goes up through Canada, but it's going to pass sort of right over us. Um, there are 17 STLS libraries that are in the path of totality. Um the last it's the last total solar eclipse until 2044 uh 2044 is 20 years away um and that eclipse will it's like a c shape uh it starts in canada it goes down to like montana north dakota area so it's a very very small path of totality the next Total solar eclipse that's visible in New York State will be in 2079. So that's, uh, uh, and that one is more like Eastern Pennsylvania, Long Island, New England states. Um, the last one was in 1925, which was almost exactly a hundred years ago. But the the last, the next to total solar eclipse that will happen in our neck of the woods visible to us without us having to travel anywhere is 2144. So a total solar eclipse really is a once in a lifetime event. If you're not dedicating your life to being an eclipse chaser uh, and traveling around the world, uh, experiencing these things which most of us can't do. Um, so it really is once in a lifetime. It's a huge deal. I promised my kids years ago that they could have this day off of school. I don't know if Wellsville has given them the day off of school yet, but I know Alfred Almond has. And so my kids are like, remember, you said we can have April 8th off. I was like, yes, you can have April 8th off. Um, but what, so, so what's the big deal, I guess? Um, there was just an eclipse in October. There was a big one back in 2017. What makes this one special? 
Um, so this is a total solar eclipse in October. It was an annular eclipse. Does anyone know the difference between a total eclipse and an annular eclipse? If you want to unmute yourself and shout it out, or you can drop it in the chat. Didn't know you'd be quizzed this this morning. Any ideas? Okay. Um, so in an so what we know about the uh, orbits of the moon around Earth and the Earth around the sun is they're not completely circular. Um, often in books and stuff, they're depicted as a circle. We're moving in a circle, but they're really elliptical, um, meaning they're sort of oval shape. And so there are some times when the moon is further from the Earth and sometimes it's closer. And sometimes we're closer to the sun, sometimes we're further away. And so everything has to be completely lined up perfectly to create a total solar eclipse. And that's when uh, the moon appears exactly the same uh, size as the sun and com can completely block it out. If the moon is too far away in its orbit from Earth, it looks too small to block out the sun completely. And that's an annular eclipse. And with an annular eclipse, there's a bright ring of light around the edge like a circle, a ring. Um, you cannot take your <clears throat> eclipse glasses off. It's still too bright. Um, but during a total solar eclipse, it's it's dark. Uh, you can take your glasses off. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So total solar eclipses are really cool. <laughs> um, and then um, what makes this one different than 2017 is that it passes through more major cities than the 2017 one did. I don't remember the exact path of the 2017 eclipse. Uh, I think it was like from Oregon down to uh, South Carolina-ish, but I'm, I'm not, one, I don't remember 100%, but this one will pass through more major cities. Um, the path of totality is about twice as wide, so more people can view it without having to travel great distances. And uh, the duration of totality will be about as, twice as long. Um, it'll be up to just over three and a half minutes, um, which is twice as long as it was in 2017. So this one is a good one, great one. They're all great, but this will be fantastic. Um, okay. The biggest question that libraries will get, um, you could probably guess this already, is where do I get eclipse glasses or do you have eclipse glasses? Um, if you do not already have eclipse glasses, um, you can let Keturah or I know, because I know we have a bunch that we are planning to distribute, um, not in great quantities, but quantities nonetheless. Um, so one of the things, um, if you don't already have eclipse glasses, let us know, but is the important thing is really finding um, a reputable vendor. And here, there's a list of vendors here. Um, I can show you. Can you see that okay? Okay. Um, these are some vendors for eclipse glasses and uh, solar filters for telescopes, uh, cameras, that sort of thing. Oh gosh, now I don't know how to get back to my PowerPoint. Okay, Katora, with that black bar at the top of my screen, it's blocking all my tabs. Um, how do I get back to my PowerPoint without can completely you, um Can you hit Alt and Tab? Oh, now, I, now I've lost my place here. Okay, note to self, I will not click on the links <laughs> anymore. Okay. Um, is it gonna go back? Oh my gosh, it's gonna, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Okay, so anyhow, find a reputable vendor. Um, try, avoid ordering on Amazon. Uh, the glasses have to meet uh, international safety standards for eye protection. Um, and not all places on Amazon are going to adhere to those standards. Even if they say they do, even if they stamp them like that they meet the standards. Uh, in 2017, there were some instances of 
them not uh, meeting those safety standards, which could be really damaging to people's eyes. Uh, so try to find a, a vendor. Um, no, if, yes. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but for some reason they sent me 2,000 pair of Eclipse glasses. So if anyone needs, I have plenty in white Okay. Stuff. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, if you uh, distributed Eclipse glasses in... October for the October eclipse, um, your patrons can still use those glasses for April as long as they're in good condition. They're not wrinkled, uh, ripped, punctured in any way. Um, they can still use those glasses. Um, one thing that I learned from 2017 is if you have eclipse glasses, think of now about how you want to distribute them have a plan for distribution because no matter how many glasses you have right now, it it seems like a lot right now, but it won't be <laughs> as April 8th approaches. Um, so have a plan for how you want to distribute them, whether you're going to limit it to library card holders, um, residents of your service area, and also um, how many you're going to limit a patron to. Like a family of five does not need five pairs of Eclipse glasses. The, the entire eclipse is going to take just over two hours. There's plenty of time for sharing um, and modeling sharing behavior for children. Um, so uh, you, a family of five does not need five separate pairs. So um, think about how you want to distribute them to make them go for, further. Um, and then you cannot stress the importance of eye safety enough to patrons especially supervising children. Um, you can provide handouts on eye safety with your glasses when you're distributing them. And the American Astronomical Society has already created a handout for you. And um, I linked it in the Eclipse Guide. Um, I just updated this. I made this ahead of the um, Spring CE. Um, it's linked on my uh, uh, the Alfred Box of Books website. Um, so there's a ton of links and resources in there too. Um, but the link to the handout is there from the Astronomical Society um, about eye safety. So I, every program that I had leading up to 2017, I mentioned eye safety. People were probably getting tired of me hearing about it, but it's it's important. Um, so what happens if you run out of glasses? Uh, you likely will. Uh, we ran out in 2017. Um, you you will. Just plan on running out. Um, so be prepared to view it in other ways. Uh, NASA always has a live stream uh, from different parts of the country uh, that are within the path of totality. Um, you can make pinhole projectors, which is also a great program idea. They're very simple to make uh, and a very easy low cost uh, program that you can do. The last one here filters on telescopes and cameras. Um, I say with an abundance of caution. So you can purchase uh, solar filters for a telescope or cameras. Again, they must meet those safety standards. Um, however, I find the, the risk here is too great. Um, cameras and telescopes are designed to specifically concentrate light, um, and they're going to concentrate it right into your eyeball. And if you mess up, if you if you're not using a filter um, or the right filter, uh, that could be very very disastrous. So I say this one with abundance of caution. If you have someone who can a volunteer or staff person who can be at the telescope ensuring that everyone is using the solar cool. filter every time. Um, I say, go for it. Um, but if uh, if not, be very, very careful with that one. Um, you will inevitably get the question, can we use sunglasses? The answer is never, no, no. No, you can't say no enough here. Um, no matter how dark your sunglasses are, no matter how cool you look in them, no, you cannot wear use sunglasses. They're not dark enough to look directly at the sun. 
Um, but what's the worst that could happen if you look at the sun? People look at the sun, you glance at it every now and then. Shouldn't, but you do. Um, the thing with a, a so, total solar eclipse is you're going to be looking at the sun for a longer period of time than just a passing glance. Uh, you can burn your retina, uh, which doesn't sound fun. And that can lead to permanent or temporary blindness. Uh, just don't do it. No matter what celebrity is caught doing it, it's not cool. <laughs> um, this here is a video. I'm not going to click the link because I won't be able to get back to my PowerPoint. But this is a video, um, a guy showing, you know, how your uh, burns on the retina can occur. Not not fun. So um, it's a good example, a good reminder to show patrons to like, this is why we don't look at the sun, because we, you don't want that to happen. But you can take your glasses off uh, during totality and only during totality. You can take your eclipse glasses off. Um, so it's really important that you know the time that totality is going to occur. Um, there are some signs that you'll know it's happening uh, that we're going to talk about in a second. And really just supervising children, making sure that they're wearing those eclipse glasses when they're looking at the sun. Um, totality, depending on where you are, we're going to talk about the location and how long it will last is one to three-ish minutes. Um, so be careful. You can take them off, but you got to put them right back on. So another question that you'll likely get is where can you view the eclipse? Um, all of the STLS libraries will be in a partial path of totality, so you'll see a partial eclipse. Um, the, there are 17 libraries who are in totality, though. They're listed here. Angelica, Fillmore, Almond, Cancerega, Cuba, Friendship, Rushford, Belfast, Arcourt, Cohocton, Wayland, Atlanta, Prattsburg, Penyon, Branchport, and Middlesex. Um, I will say Almond and Prattsburg, um, like your exact coordinates for your towns are not in the path of totality, but like if you travel a mile, then you're in in totality. So um, you could probably find somewhere to go to hold a cool program. <laughs> um, so if at all possible, get to totality, um, but everyone will see a partial eclipse. But isn't it usually cloudy, cloudy in April? It sure is. Uh, we have a 50% chance historically of clouds in April in New York. Um, so have alternative methods for viewing, uh, such as NASA live streams, and also a plan uh, to weep quietly to yourself somewhere if it's too cloudy. Uh, little Pusheen here is, uh, he's sad. This, this will be me. If it's too cloudy, I will. I will cry. <laughs> You're also going to get the question, what time will it happen? Um, so uh, eclipses are broken down into contacts. Uh, first contact is when uh, the first bit of the moon starts eclipsing the sun. Uh, that will happen about 2.06 p.m. These times are for Fillmore also. This link here I was going to show you, but now I'm I'll show you at the end when I'm done with the PowerPoint. Um, we'll show you, you can go to your exact location and it'll show you the exact time each thing will happen. Um, second contact is totality. Um, the moon is completely eclipsing the sun. That's at 3.20 p.m. Um, fourth contact is when it's over 4.33 p.m. So just over two hours, that's how long it'll take. Um, but people are going to ask, they want to know what time totality is going to happen. 3.20, depending on where you are. So double check that. Um, if you need help double checking, let me know. Um, so how long does totality last? It depends on where you are, where you're choosing to watch um, the eclipse from. Most of our libraries in the southern tier will see uh, just under a minute to just over a minute or over two minutes. So I tend to think of the path of totality. This is the path of totality here um, as like a road 
Um, and so if you think about a road, your white lines, you have the center yellow line, the closer you are to that yellow center line, which is red on this map here, the longer totality will be. And right here on the red line in Buffalo, it'll be three minutes, 45 seconds, I think. Um, the further out you go towards your white lines of the road, if you will, or blue lines here, um, the shorter it will be. Um, I think Fillmore has the longest uh, total duration um, in our library at our libraries, and I think it's uh, two minutes twenty six seconds. Um, so that is totality there. But if your library is not one of those seventeen, you're not in totality. You can still view the eclipse. You'll see a partial eclipse. Um, However, go to totality if you can. I mean, it's so close. It's in our backyard. Um, I told um, my board members, I think like two years ago now, like we're going to be closed on that day because I we, I need to go see it. I'll do all the programming leading up to it. But after on April 8th, we have to go. You have to go see it because Alfred is not in the path. Um, this here is a link uh, to my favorite uh, video showing what totality looks like as it's happening, um, sort of how dark the sky really gets, um, how quickly it happens. Um, it's one of my favorites. Um, so the sun will not be 99% covered here in Alfred or many of our other STLS libraries. Uh, that's close enough to totality, right? wrong. Uh, even with 1% of the sun still uh, still visible, the sky is too bright to experience some of the really cool phenomenon that you can see during totality. Um, some of these are, this is the diamond ring effect. Um, and what's interesting about this photo is uh, it'll be an exact mirror image in April. The bright part will be over here. Um, but it looks like a diamond ring. There's a ring of light and then this bright concentrated light from the sun. That's the diamond ring effect. Um, this here is Bailey's beads. Uh, this was discovered by an English astronomer uh, in uh, 1835, I believe. So this is the last remaining bits of sunlight that are uh, passing through the landscape of the moon as totality is happening, and it looks like just bright dots of light around that, that edge. And then, of course, during totality, you can see the sun's, the corona. Um, this is the atmosphere of the sun that you can only see during totality. Um, and it, it looks beautiful. It looks like a little beautiful halo. So you want to hold programs for your community, but you feel might feel intimidated. Um, I ha there, These are some sort of questions that you can help guide your program planning. Think about what's unique about your community, especially if you are within the path of totality. What would make somebody choose to view the eclipse at your library or in your community? Um, so, Penyon is right on the lake. That might be a great viewing opportunity. Cuba has a lake. Uh, Fillmore's close to Letchworth. Um, but what's unique about your community that might make someone choose your, your location to view the eclipse? You can also consider what your what programming your library already does well. If your library does craft programs and they're well attended and that's that's your bread and butter, stick to that. You don't have to reinvent the wheel for the eclipse. Do what you are great at. Uh, if you're great at science programs, do science programs. Dive right into that. Um, but, you know, now's not the time that you have to change things up. Do what you do well. Um, this third one here, what staff and volunteers can you turn to for help? Uh, this is something that we did not do in 2017. We did not anticipate the amount of people who would come to our library to view the eclipse. Um, if you've ever been to Alfred, 
library, you know, it's so tiny. And we had over 125 people here at the library to view the eclipse in 2017. And one of the things that I didn't do that I um, recommend is enlisting volunteers and staff to help you. So in 2017, uh, I had done programming leading up to the eclipse. And then the day of the eclipse, we had a an eclipse party. And inside we did, uh, we had the NASA live stream. We had our snacks, the international snack station, because I love a good pun. And um, we had some eclipse crafts. And then outside we had, we were making pinhole projectors. We had a solar scope and of course you could be viewing with your with your glasses and um we had one staff member on the desk and then i just ran back and forth answering questions and cleaning up trash and guiding programs uh and i do not recommend that don't do that have staff members or volunteers that can be you know if you're going to have a craft station and a pinhole projector station and have you know a person at each guiding each one. Um, definitely enlist a volunteer whose sole focus is the bathroom. Uh, just tidying up. There's If you have lots of people, that's lots of bathroom breaks. Um, making sure there's lots of paper towels, soap, that sort of thing. And then lastly, how can Eclipse programming benefit your long-term goals? So if you, if your library has a long-term goal to, you know, um, partner with other community stakeholders, who in your community can you turn to for Eclipse programming? How could you partner together to create a really great program? Um, if you're, if you're, one of your long-term goals is to reach, you know, more teens or families or whatever it is, how can Eclipse programming tie into that? The really great and unique thing about the Eclipse is uh, so many people are interested in it. It really is a once in a lifetime thing. Um, and so you can reach people that might not normally go attend your library or come to your library. Um, and so this is a really great opportunity for you to, uh, to meet with those people, sh showcase what your library does, and then tie it in with your long-term goals. Um, if you don't have a big budget for Eclipse programming, that's okay. Um, in the Eclipse guide, I do link it here, but it's also on my website, the Alfred Box Books website. Um, all of these are pretty low cost um, programs. Uh, bear Shadow is based on a book by Frank Ash, uh, in which a bear is trying to go fishing, but his shadow keeps falling over the lake and scaring the fish. Um, this is really great for engaging really young children uh, because when you're looking when you're experiencing totality you're really just standing in the shadow of the moon um, so this is talking about shadows how shadows are created how they move throughout the day uh, really great for young children big sun small moon is um, a visual about how our our moon which is 400 times smaller than the sun uh, can block out the gigantic sun, which is 400 times further away from Earth than our moon is. Um, and so that's just like uh, a visual about perspective and how, um, because it's closer, it can block out the sun. You can do pinhole projectors, plastic cup projectors. Uh, you can make observations. There's a worksheets with like uh, recording observations throughout the event. This is great for engaging, especially children for that two hour. If you're going the whole two hours of the eclipse, like how, how do things change? How, do, what do you notice about, um, the sky birds? Um, so that kind of engages them for the whole time, uh, keeps them occupied. And then, um, eclipse 101, this is a prop presentation that I put together. I did this back in 2017, um, just explaining the different types of eclipses, how they occur, why they occur, when they occur, um, the difference between annular and total and lunar and solar. Um, and all of these are linked in the eclipse guide. Um, so you can check them out. Um, but they're really low cost um, and and pretty simple. I've done them all.
pretty easy. So how can you learn from my mistakes? Um, in 2017, um, I did not anticipate um, the number of people that would ask for glasses. I just, I, th I think in 2017, we received, I think it might've been a thousand pairs, maybe 2000. I don't remember, but I thought when we received them, like Alfred will never distribute that many. And I shared them out with other people. I kept 500 for Alfred and I regretted that decision <laughs> so much as, um, I think it was August 21st during the year. Uh, we had so many people asking for glasses. We didn't have a plan for distribution. So if you ask, we gave them to you. If you asked for five, we gave you five. Um, and then as it got closer, we had to put out a notice on Facebook, like, hey, we now have to limit it to just Alfred Almond residents or, um, you know, it's just one per family. Um, so make a plan now for distributing those glasses. Um, enlisting pro volunteers to help manage programs and uh, activities and picking up trash. I had, I didn't have anyone. Um, and that gets exhausting fast. Um, a lot of people meet a lot of bathrooms. Again, having someone who can help you with your bathroom, like just monitoring it, keeping it tidy, um, having a cleanup crew. Um, this is something I did not anticipate was the amount of trash that people leave behind. <laughs> it was like Woodstock in my library. Maybe not that bad, but um, so I also, I'm, I love a good pun as we know. And so for my snacks, I tried to be on theme and uh, we had like um, moon pies and Starburst candies. And so I was, there were Starburst wrappers everywhere, everywhere. Um, so maybe, maybe don't be punny for your snacks. Uh, think about the trash that they will create. Um, and then uh, what community don't, don't do all the work yourself. Like what community stakeholders can you partner with to share the workload? Um, start thinking about that now, reaching out to people um, and really trying to share the, the, the work of Eclipse programming. So um, here's a link to uh, the Eclipse guide. Um, I have the slides for this presentation up there. I have slides for the Spring CE session and uh, Eclipse 101, I think, is on there already. If you have questions, you can reach out to me uh, via email or phone. I will answer your questions up to April 8th, 2024. On April 8th, I don't know where I will be at. But, um, so that's what I have for you today. Does anybody have any questions? And then I can show you, uh, I'll show you that link Maybe if I can get to it. Lori pointed out a comment that uh, many science centers and experts in Eclipse programming are urging libraries to have programs that continue after the totality to keep folks off the road as there will mm -hmm. be roadblocks. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Um, one of the um, training sessions that I did uh, said that they anticipate that this will be like one of the biggest mass travel events. Uh, I don't know, like the time frame, but um, I know that in 2017, there were a lot of people as soon as totality ends, they hit the road uh, and it causes some congestion. So um, I will show you this link. Um, this is one of the links, uh, to finding your specific location and what totality will look like at your location. So I just chose Fillmore. It'll show you, um, when first contact happens, uh, 205. Second contact is totality again, exactly what time, exactly the duration. Um, it will also show you this simulation of how it will look in your, um, at your location. Um, I mean, hopefully you can speed it up. Um, but that's how it will look. Um, so you can see exactly at whatever location you're at. 
um, I think this was like a, um, I'll show you how I got here. So these are the communities in New York state that are in totality. I just typed in Fillmore here, um, but you can type in your own um, community. Oh, and Sarah says, if anyone wants to come to Penyan, a brewery down the street from the library is having a psychedelic themed eclipse party from noon to seven that day. That sounds fantastic. That sounds amazing. I haven't decided where I'm going to go yet or where I'm going to take my children. They just announced it today, but they had a lot of Pink Floyd imagery on the like Instagram announcement that I saw. So I think it'll I be a good that. time. I love that and uh, tina says she's been in touch with storyteller perry ground and Ooh. he's planning a program with native american stories with that focus on eclipses if we can come up with a group of libraries that are interested in working together to hire him he'll come to our area to do programs march 24th through april 4th well that's oh, great that's cool that is great um and he's he's fantastic he's a fantastic uh storyteller um what was I gonna say? I was gonna say something I forgot I totally forgot but yeah if anybody's interested in that um reach out to Tina or let me know and I can put you in touch with Tina oh um one of the things that I think I linked in the eclipse guide was um Another program idea is to talk about um, art, how artists have depicted eclipses in art throughout history um, and sort of how they depict it is really interesting. Uh, sometimes they're, it's you know like a sign of something terrible happening. Um, and so that's really interesting. And I, um, you can also do a program on um, how different cultures explained what was happening during an eclipse. That's really fascinating how different cultures uh, explained the phenomenon and what was happening. Very nice. Uh, are there any other questions or comments or any, if anyone wants to share what your library is planning, please feel free. We'd love to hear it and love to exchange ideas and brainstorm together. I know, uh, let's see, Kalina said earlier, Rushford is excited for this to happen. I think you're in the path of totality. Yes, so yes. That'll be awesome for your community and you're on the lake. So that'll be great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that lake. Um, I was, I was, I was just starting to plan a program, our programming for April 7th. <laughs> uh, Alfred is open on, uh, Sundays. So we're, we're going to do a, an eclipse party on the 7th, um, ahead of it, uh, to do, to make pinhole projectors, um, and other ways of viewing all other alternative ways of viewing. Very and, nice. have, and have snacks, of course, yeah. <laughs> but not Starburst candies. <laughs> oh, excellent. Well, thank you, Melanie. Um, and um, I'll share the link out afterwards to Melanie's uh, Eclipse Guide and the uh, share the uh, webinar recording for anybody who wants to watch it again or share it with other coworkers. Well, Lori says half moon cookies. That's oh, a great yeah. idea. Those are delicious. Oh, stargazing nights. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's cool. That's at Rushford? Uh, yes, that's Kalina. Okay. Yeah. I love that. Great. Yes. Excellent. If anyone has any questions, you can always reach out. Um, I'm happy to help. Excellent. Great. 
Well, thanks so much, Melanie, and thanks everyone for joining us today. And have a great day. Thank you.